Hi everyone, it is December 20, 2017. I just posted a video about mycoplasmas, weaponized mycoplasmas that are very, very difficult to detect in, in blood. And I'm doing this video because I have received so many comments from people who are spending an awful lot of money doing everything they possibly can to feel better, to get their health back, and nothing seems to be working. I've heard from so many of you who have gone to your doctors and you are misdiagnosed, not diagnosed, some of you for 20 years, and as you keep going back and forth to doctors, you're not being diagnosed correctly, or they're just saying, well, I don't know what it is. You continue to get worse. You decline. And eventually, your chronic illness becomes a lifelong illness. Well, common mycoplasmas, now weaponized, pathogenic, and deadly. And this is an article from December 30, 2001. 2001. The linking pathogen in neurosystemic diseases. Several strains of mycoplasma have been engineered to become more dangerous. They are now being blamed for AIDS, cancer, chronic fatigue syndrome, multiple sclerosis, she did, uh, CJD, I'm not sure what that is, I'm sorry. Um, there are 200 species of mycoplasma. Most are innocuous and do no harm. Only four or five are pathogenic. Mycoplasma fermentins probably comes from the nucleus of the Brucella bacterium. These disease or this disease agent is not a bacterium and not a virus. It is a mutated form of Brucella bacterium combined with a Visna virus from which the mycoplasma is extracted. The pathogenic mycoplasma used, used to be very innocuous, but biological warfare research conducted between 1942 and the present time has resulted in the creation of more deadly and infectious forms of mycoplasma. Researchers extracted this mycoplasma from the Brucella bacterium and actually reduced the disease to a crystalline or crystalline form. They weaponized it and tested it on an unsuspecting public in North America, Canada, and the United States. So a chief virologist from the pharmaceutical company Merck stated that this disease agent is now carried by everybody in North America and po possibly most people throughout the world. <sighs> Unbelievable. Despite reporting flaws, there has clearly been an increased incidence of all the neurosystemic degenerative diseases since World War II and especially since the 1970s with the arrival of previously unheard of diseases like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia is mentioned in this article, as well as AIDS. I'm not going to read the whole article, it's very long. And it it is referenced with an awful lot of sources that prove that not only the United States and Canada and North America, but it could be that everybody in the world are carrying this weaponized microplasma. Dr. Charles Ingle, who is with the U.S. National Institute of Health, stated the following at a National Institute Health meeting on February 7, 2000. I am now of the view that the probable cause of chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia is microplasma. 
not only those two conditions, but AIDS, MS, many other illnesses. How the microplasma works. The microplasma acts by entering into the individual cells of the body, depending upon your genetic predisposition. You may, you may develop neurological diseases. If the pathogen destroys certain cells in your brain, or you may develop Crohn's colitis if the pathogen invades and destroys cells in the lower bowel. Once the microplasma gets into the cell, it can lie there doing nothing, sometimes for 10, 20, 30 years. But if a trauma occurs, like an accident or a vaccination that doesn't take, the microplasma can become triggered because it is only the DNA particle of the bacterium. It doesn't have any organelles to process its own nutrients. And I apologize if I'm pronouncing some of these words wrong. But it grows by uptaking preformed sterols from its host cell and it literally kills the cell. The cell ruptures and what is left gets dumped into the bloodstream. The creation of microplasma, Fort Dietrich created our biological weapons lab, Fort Dietrich, and it contaminated some of the lab workers working with this microplasma to weaponize it. God, how sick is our world. But I want to also read a few more uh, paragraphs. This could be one of the reasons why so many of you are just not getting, getting well. Because the microplasma will only crystallize at 8.1 pH and the blood has a pH of 7.4 pH. So it's not showing up in test results. And I apologize for the phone ringing. So you go into your doctor, very often I've heard this from many of you, that you are looked at as if you're crazy. And how many of you have heard your doctor say, it's all in your head? It's all in your head. You have some, you have a, a psychiatric disorder. You've got to go see a psychiatrist. You need psychiatric medication. Are you getting sick of this world that we are living in? I am. The testing of this, covert testing of microplasma, testing dispersal methods. One of those methods, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. So the first outbreak of chronic fatigue syndrome, these are the new diseases that we did not hear. Anybody with chronic fatigue like 30 years ago, fibromyalgia now is so, uh, it, it's it, the exponential increase in that diagnosis alone. The diagnose of a syndrome, a cluster of symptoms, and they just come up and throw this fibromyalgia label on it. They don't know what's going on with you. They give you pain medication. But I haven't heard of anybody who's been cured of their fibromyalgia. So chronic fatigue. The first outbreak of it was in Porta Gorda, Florida, in 1957. In Punta Gorda, there was also, at the exact same time of this outbreak, an influx of mosquitoes. Our National Health, or National Institute of Health, they claimed that the mosquitoes, the huge influx in that area, it was caused by a forest fire nearby. But 
documents obtained show that those mosquitoes were infected by a scientist in Canada and they were released in Punta Gorda, Florida. And there were 100 million infected mosquitoes released in Ontario, Canada in several communities. One in particular was St. Lawrence, Seaway Valley, and after that, about four or five weeks later, 700 people were, had developed myelagic encephalomyelitis, I'm sorry, or chronic fatigue syndrome. This is what our governments are doing to us. And the covert testing of other diseases. I just recently posted a video. And that video came about because the Department of Homeland Security announced that they were going to be testing biological weapons. They would be inert chemicals released on the border of Kansas and Oklahoma. Inert. Don't worry. It's safe. Our government, our military, have been doing this certainly since World War II. There is so much evidence that so many people have gotten sick and died due to our government and military and it just continues to this day. We can't get these people stopped. I'm sorry. It's because our silence is consent. So the Pentagon admitted to testing carcinogenic chemicals over Winnipeg, Manitoba in 1953. They came out in the 90s, 1990, and admitted that they were dispersing carcinogenic chemicals. How long can we put up with this? Clearly for a very, very long time. But they didn't only release carcinogenic chemicals. They released those chemicals in a 1,000% attenuated form. AIDS. AIDS was created out of the same brucella bacterium. Now, many of us have known for years that AIDS was a biological weapon. It was mycoplasma, which has also been known to cause all of the conditions that I listed, MS, Crohn's, Lyme disease, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, but what we all have is a deficiency of acquired immunity, which is AIDS. So when you cannot diagnose properly your condition, you cannot You cannot get well. You can't recover your health. So I'm going to link below to this video, Borax, Best Detox and Cure for Mycoplasma, Arthritis, Morgellons, Osteoporosis, and more. I don't, I, this is, I'm, you know I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm including this specifically because I have heard throughout my six years on YouTube there are an awful lot of people who swear by borax. So it's important to try whatever it is that you can. The loss of health. You know, we grew up hearing, well, I grew up hearing, you know, that, that your health is the most important 
thing on earth. And when you lose it, it's very, very difficult to keep going on. So many of us have lost our good health and are really struggling now. And it could very well be. I'm not saying it is, in fact, mycoplasma. But when you have all of these experts and you have people who have done the research to learn that it's here, it's been released, that many, it may never get triggered for 10, 20, 30 years, and suddenly you're having to go back and forth to doctors, a trauma can trigger it. How many of us have been traumatized You think about, well, I'll think about my own health. I was in, my health was envied. Then I made the really kind of fatal mistake entering into a psychiatrist's office and taking all of those psychiatric medications. It causes trauma to the brain. That could release the microplasma. That could trigger it or release the symptomatic version of it. I guess it mutates in your own blood. But um, if these doctors are claiming that certainly everybody in North America has this, but perhaps everybody in the world. Well, they were getting ready to, you know, depopulate the planet. And we do know that they have weaponized pretty much every uh, bacterium and virus. We know that the frequencies, I have posted videos on this too, these microwave frequencies can keep alive these viruses, these toxic uh, bacterium in our system. Another reason why so many people are struggling to restore their good health. We're saturated in these dangerous microwave frequencies, but these frequencies, they could dump these um, non-active viruses anywhere in the world and hit them with a frequency and they can become active. The same is true for any kind of virus, bacterium that we have in our own bodies. They can keep alive Lyme disease with these frequencies. So you might want to check out this video on borax, but also just there's an awful lot of videos. I don't want to recommend any because I've never done this and um, But there are an awful lot of videos here for you to check out on treating mycoplasma. And I will also link below to another video that I found. And do I have it open? Mm, may not. Yes, I do. I'm sorry. Mycoplasma. This video, Dr. Lonnie Herman. This is a shorter version of the video that I posted just not too long ago and he is talking about mycoplasma and he also talks about how vaccines vaccines contain mycoplasma weaponized mycoplasma all links are below guys